Shalom. This is the Ayat speaking to you on behalf of Brit Am, Hebrew nations, speaking to you from Jerusalem. Our organization usually concentrates upon proving where the Lost Ten Tribes are, and we show that the Lost Ten Tribes now are mainly to be found in the West. We have uh, websites on this matter, we have other uh, YouTube clips on, on this subject, and we have a lot of material. At present, we are um, going to discuss the Bible, going to discuss uh, one aspect of the Bible, one book of the Bible, the book of Proverbs. And this is another service that our organization provides in order to uh, awaken the Western peoples to their biblical heritage, to the book of books, and to begin to learn the Bible. And we are not saying that we are such great experts that we know the Bible, that, but there's no one else. That's the whole thing. We know a little bit, we've learnt a little bit, we think that what we know, what we've learnt is worth giving over to others. And you can always add, add on to what we teach you uh, on your own, through your own efforts. You can take it or leave it, take or leave what we say. And what we say is based upon the Bible, it's based upon the biblical verses and uh, bi uh, rabbinical and the related commentaries to these verses and the understanding of the Hebrew original message in the Hebrew tongue. So this is it. And uh, we are now discussing Proverbs chapter 11. This is the first part of, uh, of two talks that we'll give on this chapter, chapter 11, Proverbs. And uh, Proverbs chapter 11 mainly uh, concerns the aspects of honesty. Honesty is the best policy. Why you should be righteous. Why it is worth being righteous according to the Bible. And this is the book of Proverbs. The Sefer Mishli. Mishli meaning Proverbs or uh, uh, similes in, um, in Hebrew. And this uh, book of Proverbs was written by King Solomon. King Solomon the son of David wrote this book. King Solomon was the king of Israel, was the king of Judah and Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem. He built the temple. Incidentally, we are talking to you from Jerusalem. This is where we do well. That is uh, where we have the center of our activities in Jerusalem, the capital of the modern state of Israel. The center of the world and from any way, it's, uh, according to, both according to the Bible and in uh, practical ways. In, um, in the ordinary uh, what in ordinary in ordinary manner in many ways Jerusalem is indeed the center of the world. And this book of Proverbs is a very valuable work. It is the first book of ethics that the world knows of, that at least the first book that is still with us was written more than three thousand years ago, or about three thousand years ago, and it is still the best book of Proverbs, the best book of uh, ethics, of ethical and moral teaching that we have. It is a, a work, work of beauty in its own right. It is one of the greatest examples of literature that we possess. And it was written by the wisest man of all time, King Solomon, the king of Israel. And this is what he taught us. Proverbs 11, 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. And this is true at a simple level. We should not cheat. Business should be straight and honest. You should also be fair, fair to yourself and fair to others. And being honest and fair helps yourself. It helps oneself. It helps one build up a barrier that uh, prevents others from cheating you. Or it stops yourself from being susceptible to cheating. Honesty is the best policy in many ways, in many uh, ramifications every way and every single way also psychologically sometimes we give in to evil because we cannot find the power to resist this is not logical it should not be but this is a reality and the mind tells us that what is being done to us or what others are trying to do to us is the same as what we have done to others and therefore we, we don't we don't fight back we don't resist it enough if we are honest and we do the best we can we we have it we develop within ourselves internal powers of resistance to prevent others from cheating us or to prevent ourselves from, from allowing ourselves to be cheated. And also we give good service. We do the best we can and others feel it. They, have a, they feel this attribute that we have. 
They feel good working with us. They feel a surety in being with us, in, in trusting us. And uh, even if sometimes in some ways what we offer, uh, they can uh, get elsewhere for less money or a better deal or better service somehow or other if we are honest enough and we do the best we can, people prefer to work with us. So honesty is better for us in the business sense, in the straightforward human relation sense. This is what, uh, this is what the missionary, the book of Proverbs is telling us. Also says what we said, a just weight is his delight. A just weight is a virtuous uh, way of acting. It's the delight of God Almighty. God Almighty himself takes pleasure in us when we are honest, when we do what we should have. God himself will be happy with you. God wants the matters go well with you. By being honest and preparing the capacity to receive a blessing as if you open up, you open up um, the, the, uh, the uh, ability, the psychological preparedness to receive a blessing by being honest and even sometimes taking a loss through your honesty, God will give his blessing to you. You open up a, a, a receptacle, uh, as if to say, a vessel that, that can receive a blessing from God Almighty it is developed through honesty. And then God will bless you through this, and God wants to bless you, wants the good of you, for you. And we should not fight it, we should not resist it. When God wants to help you, open up to Him. Because, uh, believe me, if you go on the wrong path or something happens, sometimes you can have bad luck, as we all know. So when we do get a blessing, when we should get a blessing, we should not, we should not do anything to prevent it. So do the best you can, and it all will go well with you. A just weight, what we said, a dishonest scales an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight in Hebrew, Evan. Evan, uh, translated as weight, literally means stone. Uh, or it means a uh, uh, weight. Evan, a stone, was a weight, is used as a weight. It uh, comes from the root, according to Simpson, Raphael, Hirsch, Bana, which means the form of build. And uh, so too we have the word in English, even. Even means straight, but it was that was how you measured with a straight stone. That was how the measurement was done, and that is how the English word comes to us. And if you look up the etymology of this word, like in Wikitoni, Wiktioniari, the Wikipedia Open Content Dictionary, you'll find a whole rigmarole of how it relates back to the Indo-European roots, and it becomes from this word and that word. And uh, there's nothing there, it's all uh, supposition, it's all the theoretical conjecture, if you look at it closely. It does point out that in Old English the word even was also um, written or pronounced as amen, which is, uh, which they say can mean even, equal, like, level, just, impartial, true. And that too is similar to the Hebrew, we have a Hebrew root, amen, which means straight, just, acceptable, affirmed, true, that is where we get the word Amen. When we say after prayer, when we say Amen, we mean we accept it, it is true, just. So this also comes from the same root and is related to it. And uh, when you relate this word in English, and it's, uh, and it's uh, cognate in Old English, Amen, Amen, um, you get uh, very similar words to, uh, to the Hebrew parallels. And the Hebrew parallels are much closer, almost the same uh, to the English ones then what the academics claim in the old Indo, so-called Indo-European cognates uh, that, that exist, which are all supposition, theoretical, and they don't stand up. They don't stand up to logic, and they don't stand. They don't. There's no comparison. And we find this in this. And we found this in this once. We could say we, it was coincidence, but we find this over and over again, time after time. The English words are closer to the Hebrew words than they are to other European words, or then they are to the Latin or the old Germanic or the whatever other language they are supposed to have come from. So why this is so, we, we know. We know because the English people and, and, and all of the people of the British Isles descend from the tribes of Israel, and this is a proof. This is one of the many proofs that we have confirming this. We continue with uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes in comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. I repeat, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. This is logical. Someone who is humble will keep their minds on the task at hand. You will not be too proud to correct things that need uh, correction. Keep, uh, keep yourself low. 
don't get blown up and keep thinking of the part or, or, of what you have to do and you will be able to do what has to be done and disaster will not come upon you very often when we have accidents traffic accidents or even uh, in sport when we uh, we're doing well and suddenly we, we do badly it's because we let our minds wander yeah, and um, or, or we get proud of ourselves we think how well we are doing and then suddenly bang we, that, 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 that's the, the most dangerous time. Then we're liable to get walloped through pride. So uh, keep your, even if other people flatter you, just disregard it. Keep doing what you have to do. Do it as well as you can all the time until you finish doing it. And then, even then, don't get swelled up. Don't think how good you are or don't let others tell you how good you are because it's not true and even it, it, if it is true you don't want to know you just want to go on doing as well as you can and do even better and that's a, that, that is the way we go that is the way things are in 11.3 says the integrity of the upright will guide them and the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them the integrity of the upright tumat yasharim in Hebrew in simplicity and wholeness uprightness and that this too is related to the Hebrew words, which are similar to the English words. Yasha is similar to the Hebrew, to the English word Shur or Ashur. And this is uh, supposed to be related to the Latin Ashure. And from uh, or uh, Ad Sakuras it says, which is not, doesn't hold up, which is not uh, not not very uh, it's not very convincing, especially when you realise that there's a word in Hebrew which means exactly the same. Ashu and 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 Ishu and Yasha and in English the same as as the English words are the same as the Hebrew words the Hebrew words and English words in this case interchangeable. So you want to tell me that they come from the old French? Maybe they do. Want to tell me that it comes from the old French comes from the from Latin, which sounds different and means different, and you can't convince me. It's not convincing. Uh, relationship to the Hebrew, English, of the English word to the Hebrew word is convincing. Uh, Proverbs 11 4 says, Richest riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The word translated as righteousness in Hebrew is the docker. Charity. Give charity and you will be saved from death. Okay? That's what the uh, people who correct charity keep saying, in the, in, at least in the Israel. And we have a lot of people who correct who collect charity and a lot of times they um the charities are worth giving to people who laugh at them will say all kinds of things about them but on the whole most charities are honest most charities are worth giving to and if you even if you're worried about giving your money to the wrong thing cause or the wrong person just do, check it out you can always find something which is worth receiving and which you would want to receive and you should give money should give what you can because through that you get you save yourself, you open up uh, 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 an aspect of yourself to receive more from God Almighty and also you contribute something to others and this gives you a good feeling which you should have, which you need to have. You need to have this openness, this, this largeness of spirit because it is what makes you a person, it makes a man a man, a woman a woman and it makes you a, a person in, in the community and in the, the, the entity of Israel. We go on, we have uh, Proverbs 11.5, the righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. In Hebrew, Tiyashe will make straight. In other words, if we try and go in the honest way to do the right thing, sometimes we choose different policies we, or we, we, or we um, eliminate, we obviate uh, certain uh, paths of action which we would otherwise take in order, or in order to do the thing which, which is most honest, which is most straight. And very often this is the very pathway out of the hundreds of different pathways which is going to ensure our success, which is going to bring us in, in, along to home. It's going to bring us where we should want to go, where we should want to be led. Honesty, believing in God Almighty and doing as well as you can according to the law of God Almighty is what will keep you on the path, on, on the way in the direction that you have to go in, the direction you would want to go in. And uh, so we shouldn't realize also that the true choice of which a person has is by doing something wrong. You can do something wrong, you, you, you have the uh, temptation, you have opportunity. You can do it, 
and you get uh, you make money, you get gratification, whatever, whatever gives you a kick, whatever you need, whatever you think you need, and uh, you think you, you can get away with it. That's how the temptation is, presents itself to you. Also, we have Hollywood, not only Hollywood, all the entertainment industry. They show crooks, they show bad people, they show good people doing bad things and getting away with it, or not getting away with it. But on the whole. Uh, as long as it, they say as long as it doesn't harm anyone really, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. This is not true. If it's against the law of God, it harms. It harms you and harms others. There's no such thing as getting away with it. If everything you do, you have to pay. God gives you certain things, and what God gives you, you've already paid for because He gave it to you in, the, in advance. It is yours. But what He did not give you is not yours. So don't take it, and you won't have to be punished for doing so. So by not doing bad, by doing good, we prevent punishment and uh, bad luck and adversity coming against us. And by doing good, we receive a reward. We might not receive it straight away. We may not receive it uh, in a way that is obvious to us, but at some stage or others, we will receive it, and we will receive it in such a way as we would have wanted to receive it if we had have known the options that are open to us. So maybe we think we need it now, but we can get along without it. Later on when we do need it, we will get it. That's the way things work. That is the way God Almighty who sees everything, knows everything, helps us out. That's the way divine providence is so constituted in the world. And um, also we have 11.6, the righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. This is the same thing as we ever said, a slight, uh, slight, uh, slight change, slight change of emphasis. But in principle, it's the same thing. Uh, so it just says that someone is caught up in lusts, and desires, and drugs, sex, money, or whatever else. He can uh, sometimes he sees disaster approaching. He knows this is bad for him and is liable to cause him trouble. But he keeps going. He can't get out of it. If if he would get out of it, he would escape from the disaster, from the punishment that is coming upon him. And if a person is righteousness, he will be able to do it. Sometimes it might take time, it might take a struggle, it might be complicated, but if you believe in God Almighty and do the right thing and know what the right thing is, and uh, make a determined effort to do the right thing, sooner or later you will be able to do so, and you will be rewarded for doing so, and you will escape the punishment for doing what is not righteous. And also we have 11, 7. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish. But the hope of the unjust also perishes. That is a, a, a Proverbs 11, 7. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and hope of the unjust perishes. That is it. Weakness is, wickedness is death. A wicked person will no longer see the fruits of his desires. When you die, you simply know what you have done. Sometimes a person believes in falsehood or uh, gets caught up in, in a whole web, a whole, whole, whole structure of social business and personal physical obligations and needs. And he knows it's bad for him, he knows it isn't the best, he knows he's hurting others, but he can't get out of it. When he dies, he will realize the truth. He will realize that if he had a want to, wanted to, he could have changed his path. And he will, as if to say, be delivered from, from the o from the, the very trap, the very uh, mess that he caught himself up in. As it says 11.8, the righteousness is delivered from trouble and it comes to the wicked instead. So the righteousness will be delivered from trouble. A righteous person saves themselves from punishment. They save themselves from disaster. They avoid disaster. Sometimes, it, however, it does happen that the righteous suffer. This is discussed in the book of Job, all the different reasons and the implications. We have a complete study on the book of Job on our website and uh, soon also on YouTube maybe. And uh, what we have written on this, what others have given to us on this matter is worth looking at because it explains the whole thing. But on the whole, on the whole, a righteous person suffers is for a reason. It's sometimes to correct something that needs correcting or because he has sinned in the past and it is all in order to cleanse him. And there are a lot of reasons why this can happen. Nevertheless, by being righteous, often this takes an effort, and this effort is often enough to correct what needs cor to correcting and to atone for what needs atoning. atoning. And so this uh, enables us to avoid the punishment that would otherwise come upon us. 
It sometimes happens that the punishment that should come upon us is given to evil people instead, as if uh, it has been decreed that punishment should come into the world. By the way of, of uh, natural uh, events, it should have come to a righteous person, because that person is righteous. It, it avoids him, it skips over him and it lands on someone who is not righteous, it lands on a wicked person, so the wicked person gets punished more. And on the whole, people are good, get good. If you look around you, look at on the, in the, on the long range, in the long range, if you look and you take everything into consideration, health, children, uh, satisfaction with life, marital felicity, all kinds of things, uh, uh, even in intellectual uh, interest. Uh, interest in life, uh, belief, inner happiness, which uh, which uh, David, the king of Israel, in the psalm says, comes to those who believe in God Almighty. All of these are rewards. All of these things are worth happening, having, and worth having, and they come to those who, who go on the right path, and uh, they are worth it. And uh, if you look at people who have gone in the right path, their lives are better, on the whole, on the average. We believe in statistics, the whole whole universe is based on statistics. We drive a car which is built according to statistics, that such and such a thing, 99.9% .9 of the time will be safe, will be uh, will have such and such an effect. And it does, most of the time. There are exceptions, exceptions to occur, and there are explanations for these exceptions. But on the whole, our life, everything we do, if we get sick, we take a pill, because according to statistics, in most cases, in the major overwhelming majority of cases, for the particular affliction that we have, this pill is supposed to be effective. And that is the way it goes. So too the Bible is built in the same way, on the same principles. The Bible says, if you do good, you will get good. Do good and you will be blessed. Do bad and bad will come to you. And this happens and this occurs most of the time in a statistical sense when you take the consideration of uh, an extended period of time. And there are exceptions, and even for these exceptions do not necessarily, necessarily go against this rule, but they are potent when you go into each and every case of uh, concerning these exceptions. So this is the way we should go, this is the way things are. Do good and good, God will help you and you will be blessed. In 11, verse 9, it says, The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. The word translated as hypocrite in Hebrew is choner, literally a flatter. So beware of flattering. Beware of people who flatter you. Don't listen to them. We're all human. We're all human. Every one of us, we all have the same, we're every one of us, we're more or less the same. We have the same, uh, the same needs. We appreciate the same things. We dislike the same things. Uh, we have, uh, we are what we are. We are physical bodies with a human soul, with a human soul which God Almighty uh, helps us and through whom, and through whom we may connect to God Almighty through the Bible and through a righteous living. And the life can be hard, and uh, we all try. And sometimes we succeed, and sometimes we succeed less, and sometimes we fear, appear to fail. But in effect, in the long run, we see that the, the failure was a bluff, and the success was not not so successful, and so on. Uh, life can be hard, we bear it in silence, and then along comes someone and appreciates us and talks to us and he seems to understand and he empathizes with us, uh, empathizes with us, symp uh, sympathy, and uh, maybe has a gen genuine liking for us, he identifies with us, or maybe he doesn't, maybe it's just all manipulation, it doesn't really matter when that person uses the power he gains over us, the influence he gains over us, to, uh, to direct us in certain paths along certain ways to take certain attitudes, this very often can be harmful to us. And the, the, the Proverbs, Solomon through the Proverbs and is warning us against this. Be aware of flattery. Do not accept it. Or if you do accept, have to accept or listen to it because uh, we need a little bit of, a, of good words to be said unto us. Don't let it interfere with your judgment or don't let it interfere with what you have to do and what you should do. Be, and they uh, again knowledge, but through knowledge he will dart understanding, comprehension, uh, information. Know the truth. Know what where the reality is. Through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. Know things. Learn things. Keep your eyes open and your ears open. 
and realize the truth, and realize what has to be done, what should be done, and you will be delivered, even when uh, there's uh, somebody that is flattering you and trying to direct you in the wrong direction, you will not go there, you will realize what you have to do, and you will straighten your pathway. 11, 10, Proverbs 11, 10, when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, when the wicked perish, there is jubilation, by righteous, you will succeed and do well. And everyone will be happy. People want you to succeed. God wants you to succeed. If you're righteous, people want you to succeed, to do well. So here and there are those who are jealous, those who dislike you and so on. So there are exceptions. But on the whole, even those, your enemies, if you are genuine, they in their heart will accept your success. People want, people are happy when it goes well with those who are good. And no one likes a wicked person, and no one wants a wicked person to succeed. And even a wicked person himself, themselves, don't want to succeed in their hearts. They are happy when disaster comes upon them in some form or other. And because they feel that it, it is coming to them, and it is not logical, it may be not, not even be justified. But this is the way people think, this is the psychology of everyone at some point, in some, in some place. So therefore we should realize that do well and good will be done unto you and do well not only in business, not only in your work, not only in your relationships with others, but do well according to the, what the Bible expects of you, according to the what an honest policy should be, do it because this is for your own good and as well as what you really want to do in your heart of hearts. Thank you very much, this is Yair Davidi speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Been speaking to you on behalf of Brit and Hebrew nations who believe in the ten tribes, believe the ten tribes amongst Western peoples, and this is what we study, this is what we research, and this is what we have proved. Thank you, may God bless all of you.